So thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we have a lot of good stuff for you today. We're gonna try to keep this under an hour. Um, I have a tendency to talk a lot. If you know me or follow me online at all, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be a challenge. I'm joined by my, by my partner, Mike, today. Mike, thanks for coming on with me today, man. Thanks for letting me be a part of it, Dave. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited to help you. Yeah, man. So uh, first and foremost, I just want to touch on, you know, uh, who I am real quick. I'm not going to bore you guys, I promise. But if, if you don't follow me online, you know, I'm a real estate investor. Um, I'm located in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, my primary focus is on wholesaling. And um, um, basically, our me and Mike are business partners and we have a company here in St. Louis and we wholesale anywhere from 10 to 15 deals a month. And uh, it's our passion. We are also putting up a nice little portfolio of running properties and doing quite a few rehabs. We have six, seven rehabs going, Mike. There's usually about eight going at any one eight? time. Yeah, yeah it's, it's quite a bit, but uh, you know, we want to, we want to give back. We've had a lot of people help us along the way and we want to, we want to give back, you know? So, um, but I want to take you guys back to when I first started in this business. I've been investing in real estate for about 12 years, but very passively up until about, uh, I don't know, two and a half, three years ago is when I kind of went full time. And, you know, it took me um, a couple months to get my first deal done in, in terms of wholesaling because I had analysis paralysis and I didn't know what, uh, you know, where to start and what to do. And then I hired a coach and within, man, I want to say within two or two and a half weeks of having that coach, I did my first deal. And then the very next week, I did two deals. That's awesome. It was cool. Yeah. It was really cool. But, I mean, that was a game changer, having that coach in my life. And uh, I still talk to that coach, you know, once a month. He's awesome. So, great guy. Um, but basically, I had that, I had, you know, I was at my lowest point when I first started. I was $60,000 in credit card debt. And um, the coaching program that I joined was um, somewhere between six and 7000 and um, I put it on a credit card. I was sixty thousand dollars in debt, and I just figured, you know what? What's the difference between sixty thousand and sixty-six thousand? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that much of a difference. I'm already in the hole. And um, you know, and then I had that eureka moment, and I turned. Uh, I, I I hired that coach and started doing deals. And proud to say today, I don't have any debt um, in terms of credit cards. I have you know some, some good debt in terms of rentals and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it was it was uh, awesome. So. Um, you know, now now we have an awesome business, and again, we're kind of wanting to, uh, you know, wanting to give back. So, Mike, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So, I uh, work with Dave. Obviously, if you guys have seen the Discount Property Investor podcast or heard us, you've heard my voice before, uh, and I support Dave with the coaching program as well. So, we do a little bit of, uh, mm -hmm. of coaching as well, and Dave and I kind of tag team on that. Yep. I head up more of our rental and rehab division, whereas Dave is still the lead on our wholesaling uh, mm -hmm. division. So my story is kind of similar to Dave's. Uh, when I started out, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was in a job and it was the worst. I mean, I was just stuck. Every day I had to show up at, uh, well, I mean, we had a flex time, so it was between seven and nine, but I had to show up every day and put in my nine hours, you know, with the lunch hour, uh, but I was salaried. So I had just an inordinate amount of work. So I always put in nine, 10 hours at least. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was me hustling, trying to get things done. So, I mean, I just, I just said, I, I cannot do this for the rest of my life. It just doesn't make sense. I am working for a paycheck and it's, it just feels like prison. So I just wanted out. So I saved money, uh, paid off uh, some of my uh, personal debt and then I just quit. I had uh, one or two rentals, which I was living very, very modestly, but I was able to pay my bills um, with that money. So again, I could eat, I couldn't live the life I wanted. I couldn't, uh, couldn't buy a nice car. I mean, I had a used car paid off, but again, it was just, I was just getting by. So I quit my job with no income and it took me the better part of six months to figure out how to wholesale. Again, it took me six months. So there was a good, um, several months of me just listening to podcasts and stuff and just trying to figure it out. Then I did, I signed up for a coaching program. Uh, and then I found a local mentor and partnered up with that that individual, and my business just took off. I mean, it was just night and day difference. Uh, started making enough money to again start acquiring rentals. I think David mentioned we, as a company, we have uh, about 50 rentals now uh, between us. So again, we're we're doing everything that is just it, it, 
it's just a life changing experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the past several years. Hey, I got to interrupt, man. Yeah, go Mike for it. did a deal yesterday, made fifteen hundred bucks, and he sent two text messages. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's life changing. It is. Most people have to well, work for two or three weeks to make fifteen hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you forget, and I, you forget about it too. Yeah, I'm not bragging by saying that, guys. That that's not the point. But it just goes to show you, like, you know, the business is, is pretty simple. Yeah. You know? so, so, and that's, and that's that was a, pretty neat. Well, that's, we were in a, in a meeting yesterday. That's what I was just going to say. He sends one message, <laughs> and then he sends another message, and boom, it was done. We mm -hmm. were in the middle of a meeting, and we're, we're doing a deal. Yeah. It's kind of funny. It, fun. it just it changes your perspective. Well, let's talk about the, our business just a little bit, guys, Absolutely. before we jump into the webinar. Um, so, again, you know, we're doing 10 to 15 wholesales a month on average. Um, you know, some months are slower, some months are eight or nine, some months are 18. Uh, but on average, we're anywhere between 10 and 15. Um, the average wholesale deal that we do, what do you think, Mike? Say 500, 8,000? Yeah, around there. Somewhere in there. Now, that, that doesn't mean to say that we don't do the $1,500 deals. But we also have them, you know, that are 25, 30 grand too. So actually, we got one in the process right now that's going to be uh, close, close to 60. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, with that being said, our gross, our gross deal is about 7,500, our average deal. Uh, we do have a, roughly about 50 rental properties collectively with the business. Uh, we have a brokerage that we are launching as well, and uh, we're doing all things real estate related, uh, you know, rehabbing, rentals, wholesaling. But our focus and our real, our passion is, is wholesaling. It's it's the best way to start real estate investing because you don't need a ton of money to do it. I mean, they say little to no money down in, in real estate, um, which is true. However, they always exclude the marketing aspect of that. Um, but again, I know our business is, um, is really growing and what we're wanting to do at this point, you know, is give back and just kind of offer some of the skills that we've learned to other individuals. You know, basically we're kind of wanting to launch our coaching business and help other people, um, learn and not struggle and take two or three months or, or six months to get that first deal done. You know, we think that anybody that's, that has a good coach or mentor, uh, should be able to to get their first deal done in, in six to eight weeks. I think is is um, is something that's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and really, we could hopefully get that down to less than a month. Um, but in the beginning, a lot of people they get analysis process. That's where the coaches come in. Mm -hmm. You know, to kind of get people through that. So enough about me and about Mike and about the business. Let's jump into the webinar. Um, that's why we're all here. So we're going to give you guys a step by step process that's really clear and easy to follow. Um, it's going to be focused and we're going to try to, you know, give you the literally do this, do that, do this, you know, to, to get your first deal done. That's basically what, um, you know, what this whole webinar is about. So let's jump in. I'm going to throw up some slides here, guys. Hopefully you can see these slides. I'm going to go back to my chat now. Let me know if you see my slide up on the screen. Let me, let me hear a yes or a, a see it. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Everybody see my slide, five simple steps to closing your first wholesale deal. All right, looks great, Jeremy. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. All right, we're going to jump right in. Jennifer says yes. All right, so the five simple steps to closing your first wholesale deal is really pretty simple. Mike, give us the rundown here real quick. Absolutely. So, I mean, the first step is marketing for sellers. Mm -hmm. The most important thing, especially in the current market, I'm sure you've all heard market is hot. Most important thing is marketing for sellers and finding that deal. So once you find that deal, um, you're, or once you find sellers, you're going to have to start making a ton of offers. Right. So again, once you get people calling you or you're calling people, you have to make offers on properties and get a property under contract. That is the only way to make money in this business is to have a property to sell. Mm -hmm. So, and this business, I mean wholesaling. The next step is evaluating the deals. And yeah, we put it in that order on purpose. Make the offer, then evaluate the deal. So true. We put it in that order on purpose. Uh, you need to make offers, then figure out if it's really a deal and keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Step four, market your deal and find a cash buyer. So again, once you've got that property locked up, once you have an equitable interest in it, you're ready to try and wholesale that property, sell it to an end buyer. Once you find an end buyer, then you're going to locate your title company or a closing attorney, depends on your state, and you're going to coordinate the closing. That's all there is That's to it. That's all there is to it, guys. Those it's, are the five steps. Now we're gonna simple. we're gonna dive in much deeper though, though. We will, we will, absolutely. But again, but that's it. That's all that's all I do every day in this business. 
I wake up, I, I first, I'm looking at the current marketing that's going on. I'm seeing that the leads are coming in. And then from there, I'm determining, do I need to do more marketing today? And usually that answer is yes. And then from there, all the leads that come in, I make an offer of every single one that comes in. I don't care if it's something that's in an area that I don't even like to buy in it. I'm going to make an offer on it, all right? And if that offer isn't embarrassing, I'm offering too much, all right? Next, like Mike said, I'm going to evaluate that deal, but I'm going to do that after I make the offer most of the time. Unless I'm there with the seller, I'm going to evaluate that deal. And then from there, I'm going to try to market that deal and sell it. And then last but not least, locate that company, title company, and get, and get it sold. So we're going to kind of dive in a little deeper on each of these actual steps here. Because again, we want to give you guys like a step-by-step -step process on actually what we do in our business. So this is a kind of like, this is definitely a 10,000 foot view of the business, but this is all we do. It's kind of funny whenever we put together our free wholesale course, which is where a lot of you guys probably, uh, you know, found us to begin with. But, um, you know, we had other people in the, in the marketplace, other coaches, other people selling courses saying, you guys are giving it all away. You know, what's <laughs> wrong with you? You should be charging a thousand dollars for that course. You know, and we're like, you know what though? Like, the information's out there. Everything is out there. It's all free. And, you know, by, by putting it in a nice, simple to understand, you know, order, it, it simplifies it for everybody. But it was also fun for me and Mike to make it too. So we're just, we're, we just really enjoy doing that. Well, and also, if you look at our first step in the marketing for motivated sellers, it's eliminating the scarcity mindset. Absolutely. Because that's the same thing with people. Oh, you should be charging for that. We're not worried about it. We've got money coming in. Uh, through our rentals, through our wholesaling, we're we're just we're we're about uh, helping other people figure out how to get started in real estate investing. So true. So again, eliminate the scarcity mindset. There's plenty of deals out there that applies to houses, that applies to sellers, that applies to everything. Everything. I mean, it's just so true, Mike. I love that. Let you keep going. No, that's hey, it. Hey, right hey, on. Thank you for jumping in. That's great. So there's there's easy to find uh, deals in your market. You just got to market for them, guys. There's deals everywhere. Um, I mean. I literally, I go for a walk around my house. I try to, you know, once or twice um, a week at, at minimum. Sometimes I'll try to go more, but, you know, I'm basically uh, picking different routes that I walk. I don't do the same route because if I see a new for sale by owner sign, I'm calling that sign. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are everywhere, okay? Um, so C, start marketing your business ASAP, okay? Literally, you want to go on Facebook when you leave this webinar. And if you guys don't, don't think that that's powerful. When you leave this webinar, go to my Facebook. I'm going to do it. All right. I'm going to go on there and I'm going to say, hey, I'm looking to buy some houses. You know, uh, give me a shoot me a private message or, you know, give me give me a ring. But you got to mention your 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 business on online that you uh, buy houses to your entire network. Guys, that's that's the free way of marketing. And a lot of the deals that we get come from our our circles of friends or friends of friends that. You know, they'll be like, hey, you know, I'm, my grandma's looking to sell her house. And, you know, I, I've seen these posts online from this Dave Dodge guy that he's buying houses. Maybe we'll give him a give him a call. And uh, and I've bought in several houses, several um, just from people seeing those posts. All right. So that's a free way to do your marketing. Um, and then there's some inexpensive and then there's obviously more cost, more costly. So some in inexpensive ways are bandit signs. Um, you can put them out in your local neighborhood or really you can put them out anywhere. And we find here in St. Louis that we'll put out banded signs anywhere. And it's not always the areas that the signs are at that people are calling. They maybe just be in that area. I mean, we, nowadays we have vehicles and you can travel across town in 10 minutes, you know. So just putting out banded signs, um, it's inexpensive. Posting in your local classifieds, which is like 100 different options with that one alone. It's also very, very inexpensive. And then last but not least, you know, more the more, the more costly uh, marketing would be direct mail and pay-per-click advertising. So we do all of this stuff, guys. We do direct mail. We send mail out every single week. We do pay-per-click advertising on AdWords. We do it on Facebook. Um, we have banded signs going out. We're posting in local classifieds. We're constantly trying to find new ways to market our business. Um, one little, little bullet here at the bottom here is the more you spend, the higher quality lead you will receive. And that's such a true, that's so true about uh, marketing. Um, you know, if you're not spending a lot, which is fine in the beginning, um, but you're not going to get a, as many leads and B as high quality leads. And when you find, uh, you know, if you go down the list here, free from, you know, down, down to most, most uh, are more costly, you're going to find that it's going to get more and more expensive. So the most expensive leads that we get are probably like pay-per-click advertising. 
you know, it could be $30, $40 a click sometimes. And that doesn't even mean that they're going to call you. So, you know, it's a numbers game. But one thing I do want to mention um, is that that this is the marketing business. And if you ever listen to the podcast that me and Mike put out, we, we kind of stress that, you know, uh, wholesaling real estate is not necessarily real estate investing. It's, it's a marketing business. Real estate is the product that you're buying and selling. But at the end of the day, you are an expert marketer. Wouldn't you agree with that, Mike? Exactly. It does not matter the business you're in. You're, you're in the business you're, of marketing. You're in the business of marketing. And that goes for any business, really, guys. It really does. Okay. So that's step one, guys. You have to market for motivated sellers. There's We probably have 15 other ways that we do it, maybe 20. But this right here is like 80-20 rule. This is 80% of what we're doing um, to get our leads. And this is what every other person out there that's that's uh, that's the wholesale is doing to get their leads too. Okay. Uh, let's go to step two. Let's move on to step two here. Step two, make a ton of offers and get properties under contract. Mike, take over on this one. Absolutely. So the, the key to this business, in my opinion, is having inventory. And there's no way to have inventory without making offers. Because in our business, your inventory is a house. It's real estate. Uh, this is something we really had to drive home with one of our other students. And when that light bulb went off for him, when he realized that he didn't have any inventory in his prop, and that was his problem, mm -hmm. he wasn't ever going to make money if mm -hmm. you don't have inventory. So you have Several to, of our students, actually. You have mm -hmm. to make offers on properties to get them under contract. Mm -hmm. You have to have properties under contract to sell the property. So you have to be able to sell a property to make money. Yeah. It's if you don't simple. have any inventory in your warehouse, guys, and your warehouse doesn't have to be a big, big building, you know, just any inventory at all. You don't have anything to sell. If you don't have anything to sell, how do you make money? Exactly. You don't. Exactly. So, so again, it's just like any other business. You have to have something to sell or a, again, a service or a product to sell or you're not going to make money. So again, mm -hmm. the, the key here is if you're generating your own leads, that's great because there's less competition for those people that are out there. Again, if they're calling into you, but every single lead you put an offer on, and Dave talked about it earlier, even if it's an area we don't like, we still put an offer in. Again, we have someone else who kind of pre-screens our calls for us at this point, but we tell him, hey, if it's not in our buying area, look up this and put in a percentage of the offer. It's usually about 30% yes. of what the property is Sometimes worth. it can be. I mean, even, even lower in some areas. We've bought in houses for $250 before, $500 before, $600 before, and it's funny because they may be asking 10 grand. And we don't even want it. It's just a waste of our time. So we'll say, we'll give you 250 bucks. And literally four months later, they'll call us back and say, is that offer on the table still? Yeah. Sometimes it's four months. Sometimes it's four days. They, yeah. just, they just decide, you know what? I just, I don't want to deal with it. Right. And that offer actually starts to sound a lot better over so time. So if the difference between you and the next wholesaler is you actually put an offer out there, they're going to call you back. Again, if you sent them a contract with an offer or said, hey, so true. So my true. name's Mike, I'll buy your house for $250. they are going to remember that. They're going to hold on to that. Right. Put an offer on every property. Mail it to them if you can't, if you can't reach it to them. Mail right. it, email it, get the, get the it. offer there. It's yep. extremely important. Okay, so then let's go through our list here. I yeah. kind of no, you're off good. on a tangent. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I covered some of it. Yeah. Uh, so see then, there's plenty of leads out there. They're free. And this is what I'm talking about is like on Zillow and Craigslist. We actually just had a, a nice little podcast that's coming out talking about this even mm -hmm. more. We did. Uh, but again, there's plenty of people that are trying to sell their property or even trying to rent their property out there uh, that, again, they, they have a property. They might be interested in selling it. So call them. It's pretty simple. If you don't know what to offer, here's the next bullet point. Uh, then just ask the least amount they would take for it and offer a little bit less than that. Again, it's super, super simple, guys. It's not rocket science. Yeah, I mean, Dave, I don't know if you have anything else to add. No, I mean, that's I mean, literally, I just, I just want to emphasize, again, we're trying to make this as simplistic as we can, but yeah. give you enough substance to uh, make it work. Mm -hmm. So again, that is, uh, it, again, just make So I just work. added ENF into this presentation here a couple minutes ago because I was reading through it before the webinar, and I'm like, you know what? We really need to emphasize following up. We have to emphasize following up. And the reason is, is, I was looking through some of our, like, we call it KPIs in the business, you know, key performance indicators, I believe is what that stands for. Um, but our average deal is, you know, four to six months from the time that we make initial contact with the seller to the time that we um, are able to buy that deal, four to six months. So follow up in this business is, is really, really important. It, it is because, you know, especially whenever you're going in and you're offering a low offer 
AKA, you know, you're going to wholesale it. You got to be able to get it at a great price and sell it at a good price. Um, the, uh, what was it going with this? Oh yeah. Your offer is, it's not, it's not going to be a great offer and they're going to probably be out shopping it to other people and trying to get other offers as well. So you got to keep following up, letting them know, Hey, I have a solution to your problem. I'm an investor. I don't pay retail. I, and I tell my, my people that all the time. I am an investor. I don't pay retail. However, um, you got to keep letting them know that you're, you're there to help them. You have a solution to their problem and eventually their motivation will change. And that's when the deal comes together. So keep following up. All right. So we're, let's move on here. Um, before we jump into step three, which will be our next time, I want to go back to this one slide right here. Follow up is so key guys. Our average deal, like I just said, is four to six months in the works. And this is actually one of my favorite, um, this is actually one of my favorite sales statistics. And this, this one I just pulled off the line. It's, it's a Grant Cardone, but I don't know if, he, if this is actually his content or not. I think he may have just branded it because I've seen this for a long, long time. But let's read through it really, really quickly. 48% of salespeople will never follow up with a prospect. 25% of salespeople make a second contact and then they stop. That's it. Only 12% of salespeople will only make three contacts and stop. And then down to less than 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts. And that, the, these are facts right here, guys. Okay, this is so true. Mike, do you agree with that? Oh yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. Now, here's where, the, here's where it gets really, really interesting. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. Two. 3% on the second. 5% on the third. And only 10% on the fourth. Okay, 80% of all sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact. Kind yeah, of crazy to think about that. No, 80%. That's insane. 80%. That's number. But that just goes to show you that the follow up in this business is so key. And that's why it takes us four to six months on average to get a deal, even though that I can teach you to get a deal in four to six weeks, no problem. But we're also doing 10 to 15 months. So we're doing a lot of these guys. We're doing a ton. Um, but the reason is, is we're following up with these people. We make them an offer. Like Mike said, we email it to them. We mail it to them. We fax it to them. I'll drive it over to their house and stick it in their mailbox. We make them an offer. And then we call them every week or every other week or even every month and say, hey, Ron, you know, over here on uh, 123 Main Street, you know, haven't heard from you in a while. You still got that vacant house over there? Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of a bummer. You know, you're still paying taxes and insurance on it. Yeah, that's got to burn, man. It's got to hurt. You know, well, I'm here to help. I know that I can't offer you what you're looking to get. However, I can pay you this. Okay. And after I call that guy 10 times every week for 10 weeks, you know what is going to happen? He's going to say, you know what, Dave, you're right. I probably could get more for it, but it's going to take me a ton of work and effort. And, I may, and it may not even be worth my time. You know, how quickly can you close? And you just heard that the other day, too. Boom. Just heard it the, just other heard day. the other day. Yeah. Just, just literally yesterday, I was... I was calling on a, on a guy following up. And I, I said the same thing. I said, are you still paying taxes insurance on that property? And he said, yep. And I said, I said, I can give you 135 K for the property. I think he's wanting 150 or 155. And that's basically my profit. I need to get him down to 135. And I've called this guy, I don't know, eight or nine times so far. And the first eight times, let's say I called him nine times. The first eight times he said, I need to get more money, Dave. I need to get more money. And then I called him yesterday or the day before, I think it was Wednesday. And I said, uh, I said, hey, this is what I can pay you. I'm not going to go away. You know, if you want me to quit calling you, I will. But I'm just trying to offer you a solution. And he wasn't mad. You would think people would get mad. He wasn't mad. He goes, you know what, Dave? He goes, I'm not mad. I'm actually grateful that you're calling me because I need to get rid of this house. I need to convince my brother and my sister to take this 135 offer with me. And let's just move on. So let's move on with that being said then. No, it's great. I'm glad you follow added up, that. I'm glad yeah, you added follow that. Follow-up is so key. Step three, evaluate the deal. Mike, jump in. All right. So evaluate the deal. So again, we did put making offers first. So for the, the super new guy, yeah, it can be very intimidating. But again, the, the quickest way, run on Zillow and offer 30% of what they have on Zillow if you really, really don't have an idea. Um, but what we do is we use something called the, uh, the MAO formula or the maximum allowable offer. So you start mm -hmm. with your ARB and you have to find comps for that. Mm -hmm. Simple tool, again, using Zillow, you can go into Zillow and make sure you're looking at the recently sold property if you don't have access to the MLS. Mm -hmm. And or, Zillow is a great tool, guys. I use Zillow every single day. I have MLS access as well. 
But sometimes I just go into Zillow because it's easy. Let me let me make it very clear. We're not talking about using this estimate. No. You want to go that's in a good point, and you want to look at the sold point. properties from Zillow. This is if you don't have access to the MLS right. or an agent. But you can pull no the agent. solds in the area. Right? You can, and this is going to be really, really good data for you. Mm -hmm. Again, so you use that to determine how much the property around your property have sold for. Mm -hmm. The next thing is you want to figure out the cost of repairs uh, and your wholesale fees. So you're going to run out to the property. You're going to meet the seller. You're going to talk to them. And you're going to figure out, oh, man, well, this one looks like it needs, you know, the kitchen's really, really ugly. It needs updating. Uh, or the, the roof has got a hole in it. We're going to have to replace the roof. Their shingles falling off. Okay, so I've got I've to replace the roof and replace the kitchen. All right. Uh, then you also want to think about your wholesale fee. So how much money do you need to make on this property? Mm -hmm. And that is, again, we usually factor in five to $10,000. Again, it just kind of depends. And it just helps give you a cushion when you're marketing it out to your mm -hmm. buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, so then what is the MAO? So you're gonna determine your ARV, you're gonna multiply it by a discount rate. And again, it really kind of depends on the area you're in. So for us, we use about seven or eight, sorry, or 70 or 80%. 0 0.7, 0 0.8. 0 0.7, 0 0.8 mm -hmm. of the after repair value for our discount. Now Mike, you had mentioned earlier, I'm gonna interrupt you for a second here. I'm good at interrupting people. Um, that sometimes we do 0.3. We do. Why would we do I that? I did say that. You said that earlier. So again, why would we do that though? Why would we do that? Well, because it's a property we don't want. Great point. So quite <laughs> frankly, if this is in, we live in St. Louis. So if you're familiar with North St. Louis, um, you, you've probably seen them. There's a lot of crime there. I'm thinking of uh, Chevy Chase on the uh, family vacation <laughs> when, they, when they pull up. And then they ask for directions, and then the wheels are stolen off. Right. The it's not that far from the truth. <laughs> there are some neighborhoods that you don't want to be in. So, right. again, that's when we offer extremely low or high discount rates. It's high high discount rate or low offer. Same thing. Because what it is, it's a percentage, the way the math works. So, again, the 0.7 is really 30% off. Mm -hmm. So, essentially, if it's a $100,000 house, I'm going to multiply it by that 0.7. That gets me to $70,000. Mm -hmm. Now, say I needed that kitchen and that roof. Let's say it needed $10,000. Uh, of repairs. Well, then I'm going to subtract that out. So now I'm down to 60000 Then I take my wholesale fee. I'm going to take off another 10000 So now I need to buy that property for $50,000 or less to make my target profit. Mm -hmm. So again, that is your maximum allowable offer. It doesn't mean you want to start with that offer. If I go out there and I start with that offer, I don't have any room to negotiate. Yeah, so that's a, that's, that's a great point. And I highlighted it, or I bolded and underlined it below because that is so important. When I first started in this business, I was always going in with the MAO. I didn't know better. And basically what I would end up doing is I'd end up having to, my fee was my only negotiating room. Yeah, and that's I, terrible. You're then, negotiating for your pay at that right? point. Right, and that sucks, that sucks. So you always wanna go low. So. Run through a, a quick scenario again, Mike. I, I don't know if you did or not. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So again, we take that hundred thousand dollar house. Mm -hmm. So we we looked at the comps or uh, the similar properties in the area. We think they're they're selling for around a hundred thousand. That's our ARV. We're going to use the discount rate of 0. 0.7 or thirty percent. Sure. So we take that hundred thousand, multiply it by that discount rate, mm -hmm. uh, and it gives us seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Next, we have to take off the repairs. Mm -hmm. So we said, if this one needs a kitchen and a roof, and we can do it for ten grand, mm -hmm. we're going to subtract that ten thousand. So now we're at sixty thousand. Then we have to get paid. We got to get paid, guys. So again, that's the price that a another investor would pay for that property. That's a great point. That is the price. I'm going to repeat that: that another investor will pay for that property because they're all in this market looking at the same deals, and we're all wanting to get that kind of a discount rate. So go ahead, Mike. Hundred percent. So and that's and that's key. So where do you find that discount rate, right? That's kind of another question. Mm -hmm. Well, ask other investors. Ask other investors. Hey, what are you paying for your property? And they may not know. They may not be familiar with that. We refer to it as the discount rate. They may not be familiar with that. Just say, well, how do you calculate? You know what you pay. Yeah, and they'll, exactly. They'll, they'll tell you. They'll figure it and out. And it's going to be you. very similar to this little tiny baby formula right here. Um, they may have it in a little different order or whatnot, but it's going to be very, very simple. Very simple. Um, okay. So then minus your fee. So we went from hundred to 70, and then he went to 60 because we had 10,000 in repairs. Right. And then let's say our fee was 10,000. 10, so we would be at 50,000, all right? That is the most we can pay for that off that property. So we are not gonna offer 50,000. We're gonna offer 38, 42, mm -hmm. or something a lot lower. Absolutely. Because then they're gonna say, oh, I need at least 70. Well, I'm at 38, you're at 70. If we can meet in the middle, we'll be at 50. Mm -hmm. and that's what happens when you follow up and you build rapport. You, you get them to, 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 to see your side of it 
and that you have to be able to get the property at a discount to be able to make money on it because you're an investor, you don't pay retail, and you definitely don't buy property to lose. You know, as any investor, the number one rule in investing is don't lose money. You got to make it, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, it's very simple, very, very simple. So that's step three, guys, evaluating the deal. So this is such a simple process. Step four, market your deal and find cash buyer or buyers, okay? How do you market your deal, okay? This is one of my favorite parts of the business. I love being in the field and I love coaching people, but this is one of my favorite parts of the business. Post your deal on Facebook. Post it on the marketplace, post it on local groups, post, uh, post it on online classified sites. You can, you can post it on Zillow or Craigslist or eBay classified. There's other sites out there that will let you syndicate to a bunch of other sites. What are the, there's a couple of those uh, little like landing page sites. I can't mm -hmm. think of them off the top of my head, but they'll let you syndicate to maybe 15 or 20 other sites like Zillow and Craigslist. Um, Network at all your local RIA. So I've been making an effort recently. When I first started in this about three years ago, I was at every RIA meeting. And then I kind of uh, slowed down. But recently, I've been getting back into going to the RIAs again, networking with other investors and just getting some FaceTime in and, and finding buyers that way. But, but go to your local real estate uh, meetings, your RIAs, your meetups, and bring your deal with you to these groups. And this is nothing more than just a piece of paper that has a picture of the house with an address on it that has the numbers. You know, this is the ARV. This is what this house will be worth when it's fixed up. This is the estimated repairs on it. And this is what I'm selling it for. It could be that simple, guys. Do not forget your name and phone number. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be able to know how to contact you or your website or your email or whatever you got. It doesn't matter. Um, but don't overthink it. You don't even need to have business cards to do this, guys. Print out the paper. Go to the meetings. Who who were at the real estate meetings, Mike? Uh, real estate investors. Duh, yeah. right? It's not that hard to figure that out. Go to the go to where the people are looking to eat and bring food to them. That's that is that's that simple. Call investors that you know and see if they're interested in your deal. So what we do is we call investors, we text blast out investors, and we email blast out investors. But oftentimes we don't even need to do do the second two. Like Mike, just the other day in our meeting. He got a property in an area that he had a buyer. This buyer has been telling him, hey, I will buy in this area all the time. Anything that hits your desk, call me first. Well, it eliminates a lot of work for us because all we do is just call that guy and say, hey, I'm going to make up a name. Say, hey, Jim, you know, we something just hit my desk that you've been asking me for for four months. Are you interested? And then Jim gets in his car, drives over there, and a half an hour later, he calls or texts you back, says, I want it. And it's that easy. It's done. All right. So D, call investors that you know and see if they're interested. Uh, e, last but not least, start an Excel sheet with investors info. You know, build a buyer's list. We use a CRM called Podio. And in our coaching program, we help people set that up and, 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 and get and, and get used to it and learn how to use it. But, uh, you know, use a CRM to keep track of sellers and buyers. It helps with the follow up process as well. CRMs are key when it comes to follow up. But also, you know, you don't even need that necessarily to get started. Just start with an Excel start sheet. With an Excel start sheet. with a notepad, whatever works. Write right. it down, yeah. yeah. But just build that list. Basically, get a name, a phone number, and then just a little bit of criteria about them. Like they like North County, they like South County, they like West County, or they like rehabs, or they like rentals. I mean, you don't have to overthink this. You don't need to have tons of information. You just need to have just a couple little things, and that's it. It's that simple, guys. So that's step four. Yeah, ahead, and this one is is much easier than most people it's so easy uh yeah they estimate that oh i've got to build a buyer's list first well you no, you don't you find a deal first a, and, and a good, good deal one. sells itself yeah exactly uh and even if it's a mediocre deal they usually sell themselves right. market's hot right now <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> so true but that's step four guys market your deal find cash buyers and sell those deals it's very very simple last but not least is step five locate a title company or a closing attorney and coordinate the closing. Now, the reason that we have or in there is because some states don't have title companies. They'll use closing attorneys. Others are the opposite. Some have both. I know we have both here in, in Missouri. Uh, but, you know, locate a title company or a closing attorney, um, which is so simple. So, A, Google title companies in your area. Example, title companies in St. Louis, Missouri. That's that simple. You're going to get a list of, I don't know, how many title companies do you think we have in the city, Mike? 
Oh my god, there's tons. Yeah, there's, there's probably tons. at least a hundred of them. Yeah. They're everywhere. Well, it's funny because I drive by and I'll see another one. I'm like, oh, there's a little title company. They're yeah, just, they're, everywhere. they're everywhere. They're all yeah. tucked into little plazas and everything. They're all over the place. Point being, there's tons of them. There's a, over a hundred in just our market. Okay, so no matter where you live, there's going to be title companies. I guarantee it. Call them, ask them if they know about double closes. Why would you do that, Mike? Okay, here's the thing. You're whole, you're trying to wholesale something and you're trying to sell it without actually having to bring money to the table. And if the title company doesn't know how to do that, they're not going to be able to help you do that. And as a new investor, you want someone with experience. So you're not looking for the cheapest title company right now. You're looking for a title company that has done this before and can help you. Mm -hmm. You're hiring someone at this point. So basically think of it as hiring an employee. The title company is going to work for you. So again, if they don't know what a double close is, then say, okay, uh, well, I think I'm, I'm going to try somebody else. I mean, just hang up and find and tile the next one down. Mike, you phone. said one thing that I want to repeat. The title company works for you. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. If you have any questions about the deal or any of your deals and you build a relationship with your title company, they are your biggest resource. Go to them and ask them, hey, I'm having trouble with this or that. Because they don't get paid unless you bring them a deal that, that, that they can then close. You know, and occasionally we bring a deal to a title company. It doesn't get closed. And you know what? It kind of sucks, but we worked, they worked, nobody gets paid. It's part of the, it's part it's of the business. Part of the business. Mm -hmm. And they only make money if they are going to uh, get that done. So they are your biggest resource. So yeah, go ahead, Mike. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that's well, you, a very, yeah. very big point. I was, I was pretty much finished, man. Yeah. You were going through it. Yeah. At, you know, ask them if they do a lot of assigned deals. That's the next one. See, ask them if they do a lot of assigned deals. It's very similar to double closes. Um, if you're doing, if you're going to be double closing a deal or assigning a deal, you're basically an investor. You're basically in the middle of that deal. And you've you've found a motivated seller, you found a buyer, and you just get that deal done, and you get paid for being in the middle. It's awesome. Um, D, get their email and phone along with the contact person, build a relationship. It kind of goes on to what I was saying a little bit earlier about having them as your biggest resource. If I have questions about a deal or a closing or anything, I call one of four or five title companies that I work with in town, and they all know me at this point. And uh, I'll ask them directly, hey, I got a problem. Can you help me? And it's their job to help you. So don't be afraid to do that. E, send your AB contract and your BC contract to your title rep along with your earnest money and help them coordinate the closing on the same day. Now, the reason that we say that on the same day is in Missouri, uh, we can do what's called a dry close, a dry double close. So we can actually have our AB, which would be A, B, and seller. We're always B, we're always in the middle. So our contract between the seller and us, as well as the contract between us and our buyer, that's our BC, um, we can have that and have them close on the same day and we won't need to go closing with any money. Now we may have to put up earnest money, which it could be anywhere from 10 bucks to five grand, but the average that we put down on a deal, the average is $100. And that just basically solidifies and locks in that contract. It makes it legal. And um, it's that simple, guys. So you take your AB contract and your BC contract and your earnest money. And oftentimes I can get the BC or the buyer to put up the earnest money. So I don't even need to put any money at all into that deal to get paid. So that's the, basically step five. Um, step six, bonus. Turn it into a system, guys. Turn it into a system by using a scorecard and keep your actions consistent. OK, so this is basically uh, one, it's going to be one of our giveaways. So if you stay till the very end, we're going to give you this scorecard right here that we use in our business. Um, it's an awesome scorecard, but it basically breaks down um, what marketing you sh can and should be doing, how often you should be doing it based upon um, how many deals you're wanting to close. And then each week you can go in and you can report what you've done and you can get a percentage of how much marketing and how much efforts you put into the business. Yeah, this is an awesome it's little scorecard. Awesome. And Rob, the uh, the person who introduced us, he actually helped put this together. So hopefully you guys like this. This is a bonus we're gonna give to anybody who's on at the end of the webinar. If you're still on at the, yeah, at the end, yep, we're gonna let you download it. We're gonna get send you over a link. Really, really we cool. use this in our business. All of our acquisition managers are required to fill this out and use this in our business. Um, but it's a way to keep tabs on, um, you know, on your efforts. And it, and it goes to show you, like, if we have a slow month, or we may, in a slow month to us is six, seven, eight deals. But if we have a slow month, you know, we'll look at our scorecard and be like, man, I only did 60 or 70 or 40% of my 
of my marketing this month or this week. No wonder I'm having a slow time. And right. whenever we do have a have a 16 or 18 month or 18 deal month, same scenario. We we go back to our scorecard and we're like, man, we crushed it. We had 120 percent this week of our marketing of our efforts and that goes to show you exactly why we're doing those deals guys it's awesome so um that is the end of the basic basic five steps let's go back to this real quick so we can kind of reiterate here uh, well, we should have put a summary in. i should have put a summary sure. but here it is no problem so step one guys market for motivated sellers it's simple there's a tons of ways to do it um but you have to market. You are in the marketing business. Do not forget that, okay? I can't stress it enough. Um, you are in the marketing business. Step two, make a ton of offers and get the properties under contract. Mike said it best earlier. Say it again, Mike. You don't have a property under contract, can't do what? Can't sell it. Can't make any money. Can't make money, yeah. This is your inventory. Your, your properties are your inventory. If you don't have inventory, you can't make money. Mm -hmm. So you have to make offers, get something under contract. Mm -hmm. Step three, evaluate the deal, okay? This is something that's so simple. Um, we teach our students how to how to determine repair estimates, how to uh, determine the discount rate in mm -hmm. the neighborhood or that part of town. Um, you know what the fee could be depending on the deal or with what buyer you're working with. I mean, it's all about evaluating the deal, uh, and that's really it's not that complicated, Mike. I mean, sometimes we'll spend three minutes evaluating a deal. Sometimes we'll spend three hours evaluating a deal. It just kind of depends. It varies. Um, but it's not it's not rocket science, guys. It's really not. Step four, market that deal and find cash buyers. So many ways to do it. I I love going to RIAs and just meeting local investors and selling my deals that way. It's so easy and it's fun. It's actually fun doing that. Step five, locate the title company um, or the closing attorney and, um, you know, coordinate that closing. So with that being said, Mike, um, Let's talk about some of the reasons that we were struggling in the beginning. Like whenever you started in this business, what was, why did you, did, did it take you so long to get that first deal done? What, I mean, what was the reason behind that? Well, a lot of it was fear. I mean, I just, I didn't really know exactly what to do. Um, and, and yeah, it was just, it was uh, analysis paralysis more than anything else. I was working on things, but I wasn't necessarily focusing my efforts on the right things. So it's just a, a lack of knowledge. Yeah. Um, and in the beginning, you know, it's hard not knowing where to start. It's hard to find those deals in the beginning if you don't know how to market. Right. I mean, that, that, that my biggest, I think my biggest come to Jesus moment um, was somebody is a coach that I had hired, but basically telling me you are not going to do get a deal and make money if you're not marketing. And I wasn't marketing. Whenever I hired my coach, I think I was spending four to six hours a day reading about how to do it. But my phone wasn't ringing. Mm -hmm. well, was, another, good. Yeah. So another thing that I'm thinking of when I was starting is I was doing all this stuff to build a business, to make a business. Like, so I was ordering business cards and designing a logo and a business card. Like that, that doesn't, doesn't make you money. That doesn't make money. Right. So again, you're just, it was just a lack of focus on the correct things. And That's such a good point. Yeah. It was just really, it was, um, yeah, it's just a very, it was a learning experience. And again, it took me a really long time uh, to start making money. And I really wish I would have had, um, yeah, I mean, I wish I would have done things a little bit differently. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well now and I'm really happy that I learned the way that I did because I learned a lot of valuable lessons along the way that, right. again, I'm happy to share with others. Me so. too, me too. But, you know, evaluating the houses, filtering out tire kickers, negotiating with sellers, um, standing out in a saturated market. You know, these are just some of the common things that everybody struggles with in the beginning. You know, frustration of not getting any responses to your marketing because you're not doing enough marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, how to get a return on your marketing dollars. A lot of this stuff goes into play, guys. Well, and a lot of it, though, I think is um, there. it's hesitations or they are rather um, excuses. I, mean, I don't know. It's just kind of excuses because right. maybe you've read about it so much, but you're just not implementing it. So, right. again, what is holding people back from doing that? And usually it's accountability. It's always about accountability. I mean, it's, it's nobody, always is nobody's looking over your shoulder saying, hey, Dave, you didn't send out mailers today. Or, hey, Dave, how come you didn't make an offer on that house? Right. You know, I mean, again, you need someone like that to hold you accountable. It's so true. That's so true, guys. And I mean, that was my personal experience. Right. It's the game change when that happened for me. Hiring a coach was, was, was a game changer. So we have a coaching program. I want to introduce you guys to our program. Again, if you stay till the end of this presentation, we probably got about another maybe eight or 10 minutes here, guys. We're almost done. 
uh, we're going to give away that free scorecard. Um, so just hang with us. We're going to fly through this here, guys. So we do have a coaching program here at the Discount Property Investor. Um, we love coaching people. We love teaching people how to do this business. Okay. Why you need a coach? You know, are you struggling with any of these things? This is every single thing on this. I think I struggle with. Yeah. Every one of these guys getting your first deal done. Create a step-by-step -step process to find and close deals. Knowing where to start. Developing systems that work. Lack of experience and confidence. Not knowing where to start. Finding the deal. Then evaluating the deal. Go around tire kickers. Negotiating. 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 Follow-up isn't even on this list. Standing out in saturated market. Determining your repair estimates, guys. All this stuff is something that people struggle with. And by having a coach, it helps you break those. It's a barrier busters. It is. It helps you break these barriers and just get on to the activities that produce results and in income. 100%. You know? 100%. Couldn't you agree with that, yeah. Mike? Okay.